So I've just sharpened my pencil, which means now that I can do the detail around the nostrils without making the marks too heavy. So I'm looking down at the shape of the nose here, and I really am just grazing the paper now because I'm looking closely at the form. It comes round in a, a very gentle curved shape there, and then comes down towards the area where we can see this indentation in the nose, the same as with the dog and a lot of other animals that have that indentation there. With a bit of tone there, so I tone away, again grazing carefully. If I want to do gentle grazing with a sharp point, I keep the strokes very close together so that they don't look too wide and open the way the texture is up at the top. So I'm just gently looking at this shape, bringing down the other side of the nose there. And gentle curve at the bottom relating to the darker area underneath. So here I start off with a zigzag because I am actually working up to and away from the light overlit and I'm zigzagging along and then after I've established that dark area, I will do a few pull downs on my toes just to get that gentle definition of the light hair going into the darker recess there as it goes underneath. And then pull down a little bit on the chin. This too will be in shadow, so I'll, I'll graze a little bit there just to help me when I shade that. And then few little pull down strokes along the base. Now I can come above with my hand so that I can see what I'm doing. Here actually it was dark against light and it curves down and a few little pull up strokes as I can watch what I'm doing here. Follow the formula. It's very important to get that shape for that particular goat and its mouth. Coming back down again and it just goes a little bit narrow there and joins onto the dark. So now I can just do pull downs from there because we see a little bit of the pinky colour inside the mouth. So I pull down all the way across. This bit here actually joins onto the dark. I often think when I look at our goats they look as if they're smiling because of the pattern because they have a similar pattern and it just goes up and then comes down to that area and it joins on now to this dark behind and that is taking us down to the little beard. So we pull down strokes and up underneath the chin there into a nice dark and then pull down. And these are long sweeping strokes for that beard underneath. And some dark behind here, working back up again. Again thinking of the form so that we can go round it and some dark under here. So we've got that nice contrast of the lighter area above it, bringing that head forward against the neck and some curves here. So that's got the main part of the head in position. I'm now going to choose a colour called Indian ink and that's going to be for the horns. So I'm going to bring in some tone up here where we've got shadow underneath and I'm toning directionally. I'm thinking about how I would hold the horn and get my fingers round it so that the strokes are going to actually follow that form. And there again it's tick and flick because I'm coming from the lower edge and flicking up and this is to establish that shadow area beneath the horn. And then slowly that shadow disappears as the light takes over. So I don't need so much of it and I just bring it down with a couple of little uneven zigzaggy strokes until this bit at the bottom where we do have a bit more tone. And this bit at the top here has a bit more tone and then that drifts away and we're conscious all the time of these rings that go round. So one or two of them are more prominent than others and it's those that I'll put in because we don't want to see too much repetition. Putting loads and loads of rings round would really look uncomfortable and too tight. So just one or two of them. Here we have tone disappearing on the foreshortening so I tone that in and then the dark comes round like that and this side also is much darker here, so I'm angling my arm, coming down behind some light hair. So as soon as I get to here, I'm thinking of the contrast and bringing that light hair in front. So that's the main area of the horn. And just to get an idea how it's progressing, I'm going to start adding some water because that colour will change now as I add the water and I'm going to get it merging. So I'm on my toes a little bit 
And this is another thing, I'm still having regard for the shape beneath. I'm still thinking of cutting in darks behind, so I'm using the tip of the brush and it's cutting in and I'm not just going over it to blend it. It's very important to always think of what's going to happen when you add that water. It's not a case of just putting the water on and hoping it will all look correct. We really have to keep following that form. So following the form around here, curving, coming down to a little area that's going to relate to that ear, the way the ear cuts in. So I'm still having regard for the drawing very much and I might even enlarge on the dark area because it's easier to see now that I'm actually merging it. So this up here is quite wide, pulling down, getting those delicate edges where the two meet up and then gentle pull downs, following the form around the eye and into this dark area in here. If it's not dark enough now, it doesn't matter. As long as I know later on, I'll go over it again. And very gently following the form up over the eye there. And this dark area in here, which relates to the lid. And again, looking for the rosette, the splaying out of the strokes coming round and the way they work towards the next part of the pattern, which is down here. Now I'm going to bring some really broad brush strokes to fill in this area. As with the donkey, I am having regard for the fact that the hair goes in different directions. So I'm taking my time and moving out across the expanse of the cheek, following the form round, and it's much greyer here. down into this wider band. With things like a band of white that has some flecks over it, what I would do is add that at the end with a dry pencil. So I'm just at the moment filling in the blocks and if I wanted more detail, you don't have to do a lot of detail, if you get the main pattern in that's fine, but I would then, if I wanted it, go over that white with little pencil strokes just to get that mottled effect. I just got a tiny little piece of pinkish colour to put on. Um, going to look for the colour bark. And all I do is just, I've got the pencils lying beside me here, all I do is touch the colour, the tip of the pencil, just to introduce that, because I don't need much. Just that little piece there. I'm just going to do a little bit of work on the ear. It's quite dark inside, so I'm going to go back into this and get the shape of this dark interior. There's a little bit of dark just behind it there. And while I've got the pencil, I'll just increase a bit here and some pull down strokes and it's darker over here. And I'm going to go over the horn as well. So I'll start with the horn and then work down to the ears. So I'm just touching this with the water to get that dark 
underneath. A little bit of a wobbly line at the edge will give a bit of interest to the horn. And if you press the brush, you get the clean water coming out. So that just makes it a little bit lighter on top. Wobble along again, just to get that texture. And then cutting in behind that white hair. And taking one or two of the texture lines on the horn across. A little bit on the other side as well. Wobble along. Have regard for the light hair coming up into it. Pull down. And the other horn as well. This can be a plain area. Just filling that in. And we've got a dark side to it there that gets lighter. If you press the brush, it's got clean water or it's lost its water, in which case it'll give you texture. And then it's light at the top. And then you can come onto the tip of the brush and without the pressure, the moisture comes down again. And that means you can get your dark piece down there and then cutting into that light hair. And that'll join up with the dark here. We'll just finish off with the ears. So I'm looking at dark in here. And shadow here. All this is in shadow. And the base of the ear here. And the back area can be cut in. And that will eventually go onto its dark back if you were going to do the whole animal. And just a few on the other side. These are pull down strokes to allow the light hairs to come over. And then blending out into the dark area. And I'm just going to increase a little bit of tone around the eye. I've got some Indian ink colour here. I want to look at the pencil at the tip until I've got the real pointed area and then just increase the tone at the base. A bit more depth in there and then get the dark area for that iris. And once I've got the iris in, I have to push up on my toes to allow some little light eyelashes to come over the top and then into the dark up here and a little bit more underneath here where there's another band of dark. And then very gently grazing away. That's rich dark in there. And I can now just diffuse it a little bit of water because it's a little browny area. stop it from being quite so bright. So that's how I would do this goat in ink tents and that very much would be an undercoat if I wanted to take it into a more detailed study and intensify but what I like to do here is show you the method and that's the way I would start my goat. I hope you enjoyed it. now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop is now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.